Hello, everyone. I hope you all had a great 2023. Now we're moving into 2024 and I've got some big stuff planned. The first thing I want to do is a quick video on some new features for my Blender Godot pipeline add-on. So first up, we've got some improved UI with collapsible panels, which makes it really neat and clean. I've got multi-mesh support added so you can create your multi-mesh objects inside Blender, configure everything you need to do with those, and then bring them into the game engine. I've got improved scripting support, so I added something called a parameter file, allowing you to use configuration files for your script properties. Many similar objects can use the same configuration, so it's really easy to just have that config file saved. You can even use source control on it, and then that config file also uses Godot parsing, so you can use GDScript directly in that configuration file. And I added a quick export feature just to make it super easy to export GLTF. Another thing coming up on the channel is a video series on how to create assets suitable for multi-mesh and how to integrate them into a terrain. So I'm really excited to do that video series. Okay, so let's do a real quick example showing these updates here for my add-on. I've got the add-on open here on the right. You'll see Godot Pipeline is where you can get it. You just press the N key to open it. And we've got some new panels here. So the global settings at the top, if you watched my video before on collisions, you'll know what the apply to mesh feature does. And I've added a button for clearing custom data, which you'll see in a minute is pretty useful. The next panel is collisions. This is exactly what it was like before. So all of those same collision features are here. That hasn't changed. Underneath it here, we've got set scripts and materials. And so the top part is the same where you can set a path for any of these resources. But now I've also got this parameter file. Um, you'll see in a second how that works. It basically just allows you to stick a whole bunch of values into a script that gets attached to a node. Underneath that, we've got multi-mesh. So I'll do a demonstration of that in a bit. And then finally, we've got export. This is just a convenience thing. You can just, once this path is set up, you only set it up once, and then you can press export for Godot. And it's really quick and really easy. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take this terrain mesh I have here and apply a collision to it. So if I hit collisions in the dropdown and I select tri mesh, all we have to do is press set collisions here. We don't need to reset the bounding box and we don't need to worry about margin. These settings only matter when you use a box or cylinder collision. So that's done. We have a tri mesh collision here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to set the shader and material for this, um, this terrain that has this blend shader. So we can hit shader from the dropdown, jump over to Godot, find that GD shader file. So for me, it's blend textures.gd shader. Hit copy path and we just drop it in here. So we set path and then we should see it here, shader. So we also need the material. So we come back and we're gonna hit copy path on blend material and we drop that in as well. And there we go. So we have the shader and the material set up. Next, let's do a quick multi-mesh example where we're gonna be taking this tree mesh and using it as a multi-mesh in, in Godot. So the first thing we wanna do is we take our terrain mesh here and I'm gonna use a top-down view. And this grassy area is really the region where I want the tree to be populated. So I hit tab, I'm gonna select these vertices, hit shift D to duplicate, P to separate, and then by selection. So the reason we want this footprint here is for a couple of features. One of them is occlusion calling and the other is dynamic instancing. We're not gonna take a look at those today because I'm gonna go over those in another video but those features need to have the footprint or the size of the multi-mesh area so that they can do some optimizations. So once that's done, we're actually going to need to clear the custom properties that are already on this because we copied it from the main terrain mesh. So we hit clear custom data, we see that clears, and then next we're gonna go through the multi-mesh setup. So first we select the mesh we want, in our case it's that tree I mentioned, and I'm gonna leave these settings off, but I am gonna turn on Vertex Painter add-on so we can see that in a minute. So then we hit set multi-mesh. That gives us a wireframe display for that mesh. Um, it's not a real mesh that will be imported. It's just a placeholder to let the importer know where that multi-mesh should go. And then some other things we can see down here is it's applied a size to that. So the bounding box for this object is in the dead center and we have a size X, Y, and Z. So the last thing I need to do here for this multi-mesh object is assign a script to it. 
and I have a multi-mesh painting script as well as a parameter file. So you don't need to do these steps. If I import this as is, it's going to create the multi-mesh node, it's going to assign a mesh to it, but it's not gonna have any instances and it's not gonna have any data, so it's not super useful. But what I can do is if I come over here and I copy this multi-mesh paint script that I made, and we're going to attach this to my object. So I gotta hit script, hit set path, I don't need a material zero. And then the other thing we need is a settings file. So under import two here, I have this tree paint parameters. And this is what I was referring to earlier. So you can set up any number of properties that a script file uses. We'll see this in a second. And you can assign all those values here. And you can even use GDScript to parse out vectors and different data types. So I'm going to copy this tree paint params, copy path, and then we drop it here and hit set script parameters. Okay. Now that that's all good to go, we just need to set up the export file. So I'll hit that, go to import two, and then terrain to GLTF. Once that file is set up, that will persist. So if you close Blender and reopen it, this will stay here. So this is super convenient, actually. All right, so then we hit export for Godot. We jump over to the game engine and we can see that import happens really quickly. So we find our GLTF file here. We're gonna drag it into the scene and then hit make local. Another tweak we need to do here is there's something not quite right with that script. And after you drop it in, you need to save the scene and then reload it. So it has nothing to do with the import pipeline, but there's something not right with the multi-mesh paint. So once that's done, we can toggle vertex colors on the terrain and we can do a little bit of painting. So if I hit enable painting here, set it to red, um, we can just paint in some colors. And you can see right away, you get that uh, multi-mesh populating those trees, which is really cool. I can toggle this back and I can paint in this mode too. It's a little less intuitive, but it still works fine. So you can see all those instances are, are coming in here. It looks pretty good. So another thing I just want to show quickly is what the parameter file actually does. If you have this multi-mesh here, and this is what our import script created, you're gonna notice that it has all these settings that are um, associated with the script. If we go back to our settings, we'll notice here that spacing is three, custom normal is zero, one, zero, and we can see spacing is three, custom normal. So all of those values come in from that file. It's a great way to modularize how those script parameters work. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope this was useful for you and I hope you can use the pipeline in your game. Thanks for watching.